the first presentation we have will be the utilization of cellulosic nanofibers uh, for the performance enhancement of Portland cement based materials. Um, by um, uh, this is going to be presented by uh, Professor Warda Ashraf. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Warda Ashraf. I am an assistant professor at the University of Texas at Arlington. And uh, today I will talk about how we can use cellulose nanofibers to improve some of the mechanical performances and the durability performances of Portland cement based materials. So just a little bit of cellulose nanofibers. Um, cellulose is actually the most abundant biopolymer. It is, it is the primary constituent of our plant cell walls. Now the properties of these nanofibers, cellulose nanofibers, it depends um, significantly on the manufacturing process and also the source. So we can get very high tensile strength, somewhere from 200 to 1500 megapascal. But again, that depends on the manufacturing process. Now, um, on the bottom left corner, you can see the uh, molecular structure of cellulose. This is basically a chain of glucose units. And again, we have highly reactive surface area that we can functionalize depending on our needs. Uh, cellulose nanofibers, again, uh, in the last couple of years, we have used different types of cellulose nanofibers. We have used fibers that are produced from bleached wood pulp, uh, this one here, then we have used something which is uh, from non-bleached wood pulp, so it has lignin in it. Um, we can also get cellulose from bacteria. It also has fibers like morphology, so this is also nanofiber. And in our lab, we produce these silica cellulose nanocomposites. So for today's presentation, I'll just focus on these uh, cellulose nanofiber that was produced from bleached wood pulp and the silica cellulose nanocomposite application. Uh, so this picture here on the right side, it kind of shows uh, the, uh, the consistency of the cellulose slurry. And in this case, we have 97% water, only 3% solid. So it, it's more like gel type of material. And whenever we add it in our mix, there is a huge drop in workability. Uh, so we use that up to 0.5% by weight of cement. And this maximum percentage was uh, decided based on the workability. The water cement ratio was 0.35 and we have used high shear mixer, ordinary Portland cement. Um, just briefly, I'm going to focus on how this cellulose nanofibers affects cement hydration process, uh, the mechanical strength, so compressive and flexural strength, the interaction between cement pore solution and cellulose fibers, and then I'll also show how we can use this nanomaterial to suppress alkali silica reaction. Okay, so cement hydration, and you can see the heat flow plots. Uh, in both of these cases, you have cellulose. Um, the left one is with silica cellulose nanocomposite. The right one is pure cellulose nanofiber. As you can see that the heat flow peak, it shifted to the left, and also the uh, peak intensity increased. So cellulose nanofiber, it has an acceleration effect on cement hydration. But again, we observed that at 0.35 water to cement ratio. Uh, we also looked into the reaction product. So we performed the thermogravimetric analysis. From that, we determined calcium hydroxide amount and also the chemically bound water in CSH. What we noticed is that in case of silica cellulose, the calcium hydroxide amount is very similar to the control batch. But in case of pure cellulose nanofiber, there was a drop in the calcium hydroxide amount. Uh, the amount of CH H, it was very similar to the control batch, so um, we cannot say there is any delay effect. However, cellulose has um, carboxyl surface sites which are negatively charged and it can bind some calcium ions. So that's why we saw that drop in the calcium hydroxide amount. Effects on strength, um, again, here the first one we have is a seven days strength. The blue line is the control batch. There is no significant variation for the cellulose addition. After 28 days, there is slight drop if you use high amount, like 0.5% cellulose, but not that significant. Interesting is uh, what we saw after 90 days of curing. In that case, the strength was increasing, specifically the cellulose material with higher amount, it actually showed increasing trend in strength. 
So here again, you have, uh, we have the compressive strength with curing duration for different types of cellulose and the control batch. As you can see, that cellulose actually increased in strength after 90 days of curing. Basically, what is happening here is that uh, cellulose, it helps in the, in the diffusion-based hydration reaction, and it forms higher amount of reaction product at later stage. And uh, we are attributing this increase in strength to that mechanism. In case of flexural strength, again, cellulose nanofiber, it, is, um, it has good aspect ratio, so it can work as a nano reinforcement. And we have seen that it can be used to increase the flexural strength up to 75%. Okay, so uh, the next one is the interaction between uh, cement pore solution and cellulose nanofiber. Um, so many of you may have heard that cellulose is biodegradable. So if you put this fiber in high alkaline solution, similar to our cement pore solution, it is expected that it will start degrading. So we wanted to understand what is happening there and how it will affect the performance of cement paste. So in this case, we have very simple batch experiments. We have artificial cement pore solution, and we took thin films of cellulose nanofibers, and we just put those films in this pore solution, monitored the, uh, what are the changes happening in the liquid and also in the solids for up to 120 days at 23 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Celsius. Liquid chemistry, we monitored using ICP, and uh, what is happening in solid, we monitored that using FTIR and extra diffraction. This uh, plot here, this is just, just a FTIR spectra for, um, if, uh, for our cellulose nanofiber. So just like any other hydrocarbon, it has a lot of peak. And um, you, we can mark the amorphous region and crystalline region of cellulose nanofiber based on this FTIR. But we are mostly focusing on this hydroxyl region that is from 3000 to 3600. What is happening here is that you can see two different peaks. One is a little bit narrow, sharp peak. Another one is broader peak. So these two peaks, this represents the intermolecular hydroxyl bond and intermolecular hydroxyl bond. What do I mean by that? Let's look at the molecular structure of cellulose fibers. So cellulose fibers, um, within those glucose chains, we have hydrogen bonds. So that will be our intrahydroxyl bond. Again, two different cellulose chains, they can also have those hydroxyl bonds on the surface. That will be our interhydroxyl bond. So due to the alkali degradation, if our cellulose, is, uh, cellulose chain is breaking, that means either we are separating the glucose units or we are forming new cellulose chains, we will see an increase in the interhydroxyl bond intensity here. So here is the FTIR spectra that we collected up to 120 days. Um, and we saw increase in interhydroxyl uh, bond but it's kind of difficult to like uh, just understand that based on this figure. So we quantified and we are presenting that in terms of intensity of interhydroxyl bond versus um, intensity of intrahydroxyl bond. And there was an increase. That means our cellulose is degrading. At the same time, we also monitored uh, what is happening with XRD. And um, basically cellulose is, is getting more crystalline. So cellulose nanofiber, it has amorphous portion and the crystalline portion. Due to the alkaline degradation, the amorphous, uh, amorphous part was breaking and the crystallinity was increasing. Now, the question is our cellulose fiber was getting affected, but how our pore solution or cement paste will really affected by this degradation? So because of, uh, to understand that, then we monitor the, our pore solution chemistry, which is just um, uh, monitoring different concentration. We monitored sodium concentration, potassium, calcium, sulfur, aluminum, and so on. The interesting part here is that um, we saw decrease in potassium and sodium concentration. There was not any secondary phase precipitation as we observed from extra diffraction. And the sodium decrease and the potassium decrease, it was up to like seven to 10%. Again, um, so this is because when this alkali degradation is happening, those new chains that we are forming, new chains or new carboxyl surface sites, again, those are negatively char uh, charged sites. And those sites can again bind some positively charged alkali ions. And that's why we see this drop in the alkali ions. 
now we understand that okay alkali degradation is happening it can bind some alkali ion but question is can we use that in our cement system and it was very obvious uh, route for us because alkali ions concentration of alkali was decreasing so that's why we wanted to see if we can use this mechanism to improve the alkali silica reaction uh, performance for cement paste so that's what we did um, we did this test as per ASTM standard, ASTM C1260. In this case, we prepare mortar with sodium borosilicate glass aggregate, very reactive aggregate. We put the samples in sodium hydroxide solution at 80 degrees Celsius. So it is a pretty harsh environment for ASR reaction. And we monitored the expansion of the mortar bars at 24 hours interval up to 16 days. That's, that's the standard um, for this method. So this is the control batch. And as you can see there, um, this point to person, this is kind of the uh, suggestion from that A standard. And of course our control batch is showing expansion because our aggregate is reactive. Then we added 0.05% um, cellulose nanofiber. There was a slight decrease in the expansion. We then added 0.1% cellulose nanofiber. There was again some um, reduction in that expansion. 0.3%, it was somewhere in between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. But the takeaway point here is that now this nanofiber, cellulose nanofibers, it can be used to actually suppress the alkali silica reaction. And we saw a substantial decrease in that expansion. That is, we saw 32% decrease. So that's all the experimental results um, I have. So just to conclude um, and to match with our session title, why cellulose nanofibers in concrete? Uh, first of all, we saw that it can accelerate early age cement hydration because of those nucleation effect. It can enhance the compressive strength at the later age. Um, again, as a fiber, it can also improve the flexural strength. This cellulose nanofiber, it experienced alkali degradation or alkaline hydrolysis but we did not observe any significant effect of this process on our strength. Our strength was still, it was increasing. And this alkaline hydrolysis or alkaline degradation, we can actually use that for our benefit. We can use that to suppress alkali silica reaction of our um, cement paste system, uh, mortar system. Well, so that's all I have for today. Again, thank you very much. If you have questions, I will be happy to answer or um, you can also email me questions later on.